it's sabrina and this is a vlog and it is also my last first day of school ever because i'm never doing another year of school okay it's really early in the morning and i'm really tired i didn't get a lot of sleep last night because i took an impromptu nap at eight and i woke up at 10 so i've been up since no i went to sleep at three then i got up at seven i had my alarm going on like around six because i kept debating if i wanted to do my makeup or not so i was like i got some new makeup products and i don't know how they're gonna look and i'm going somewhere over the weekend and i don't want to test it out then because time is just really like the killer for my weekend trip so i wanted to like test them out before but my skin is really bad so we're not gonna put anything on there anyway it's 8 in the morning i have class at 9 20 i commute so i like have to take into account traffic because right now it's gonna get really busy because everyone's going to their 9 a.m job i don't know if i should take a longer way that's less busy or just sit in traffic and possibly be late to class anywho the book i'm reading right now is six crimson cranes i'm about 150 pages in and i have some thoughts on it but i'm gonna try to get this done before my trip i leave on friday so i'm hoping that i can get a good chunk of it read today and then finish it tomorrow i do have to do a couple of things before i leave so maybe i'll record that that's it for right now first day done it's like 1 30 and i'm gonna go to barnes and noble i have decided to dnf six crimson cranes but first let's talk about the book that i got she who became the sun i can't tell you what this is about other than this is a reimagining of the rise to power of ming's dynasty's founding emperor because the back is just full of reviews yeah but, oh, Melinda Lowe. She gave a quote. That's cool. I love Melinda Lowe. Anyway, this book, the first time I saw it was at Barnes & Noble. And I was pretty much looking for fantasy books, like adult fantasy books, after I finished the Greenbone Saga. And so I was looking for something in like a similar like territory. And I saw that book and it was recommended by the staff. And I was like, I don't know. Because again, it has no synopsis on the back. And I looked it up on Goodreads and I was like, I... I, I really don't know how I'm feeling about this and I almost got it but I didn't and this was like maybe a month ago and then I went again a different time and then this book just kept like staring at me and I was like should I get it should I not I stood there for like a good five minutes just debating but then I was like it's fine I don't have to get it but then I think the sequel came out like he who darkened he who drowned the moon or something like that it came out and so a lot of people on book twitter have been talking about this book and also that book and a little bit of spoilery stuff but like I really don't understand like what this book is even about so it's not really spoilers if I don't understand it so so I'm intrigued and I trust book Twitter recommendations more than book talk or book book instagram recommendations because too many times have i read a book that was recommended through tiktok or instagram and it was just like the most bizarre thing i've ever read or like not a good read but majority of the time that i read something that was recommended from book twitter i've loved it in a jam long shot that has trigger warnings that you should definitely look up the whole series by kennedy ryan you should really go look Look at the trigger warnings but it's a really good series i really like it i don't like the second book though first and third book third book i love it so yeah in a jam long shot the sword of kaigen the green bone saga i just book twitter is the superior way to find books i don't have mutuals but like if you have mutuals or like if you follow people who are remotely in the book atmosphere the book space type of thing you can always trust their recommendations because sometimes they'll just tweet something and it's like sometimes the most unhinged thing ever and i'm like i now have to read that book because trust me the thing that made me want to read the Greenbone saga was knowing that hilo had jade nipple rings so just 
just trust book twitter anyway let's talk about six crimson cranes since i decided to dnf that it's really not complicated it's just i started this book and i think after two three chapters i could already tell that this book would have been way better if it was longer because the pacing is really off we have shiori who is the main character she's the only princess of kiata and she has six other brothers who are older than her i don't know i feel like i just had like expectations for this book and then this book just wasn't what my expectations were and so it turned me off from it but also like again the pacing is off spoilers here if you care but shiori she has the power to reanimate or animate i think and uh, the thing is like magic is banned in kyata if you have it they will exile you and so shiori she doesn't want to be exiled obviously and so she hides this fact from everyone basically but like the whole magic thing like i think the reanimation the animation power is really really cool but there's like no sense of danger within this book yes there is like the blatant shiori being found out by her stepmother for having this power and then the stepmother turning shiori's six brothers into cranes and exiling shiori making sure that she can't talk or write about like whatever's happening very very howl's moving castle vibes there and if shiori does speak about it or write about it then one of her brothers die this is where i'm saying like the pacing is off because the brothers are the ones who are in danger right and so we should feel a sort of connection to them like through shiori's eyes like this is told from her perspective a first person perspective i don't know like when her brothers get turned into cranes i just like i don't care like i don't really care about any characters in this book like not even shiori the only one who had an ounce of my intention was probably raikama the stepmother because there was just like a lot of secrets there it was just like i don't know oh my gosh this is what i'm saying the book should have been longer because the pacing is off we're seeing this whole story through shiori's eyes and she doesn't really spend time with her brothers like the only brother she really spends time with is hasho but the only thing we know about him is that he really cares about shiori and he's a nice brother every other brother is just like there and they're either characterized as like they really care about shiori or they're the mean brother or they're the nice brother i feel like there was no characterization growth with them even like almost at the 200 page mark and like when her the time that her brothers turn into cranes and shiori gets this curse put on her like they're lost for like 30 pages <laughs> within those 30 pages it like talks about shiori's like four four months away in exile um working for this restaurant owner who's abusive and i don't i feel like it could have been done in 30 pages but like for this it didn't do it again there's no sense of danger like the stakes weren't high enough for me to actually like be gripping the edge of my seat for me to like feel scared for shiori or her brothers even when shiori like yells for her brothers like when she first gets exiled it's like they're false snakes and that's it's like a warning i was like i don't understand why there would have been a warning like if you were fucking serious about it stepmother then you would have like one of the brothers pacing is super off i don't care about any of the characters not even the father don't really care about him and then like with shiori coming into these like near-death experiences it's just a little too convenient that she survives and that it's her brothers who are saving her you know and i feel like we found her brothers like way too early because the synopsis of this book says that like she loses her brothers and she has to team up with the guy she was supposed to marry but she found her brothers before that and so like yeah i like could read more but i really don't want to i don't want to like force myself to care <laughs> i'm really not in the mood for this so yeah i'm gonna dnf it it's yeah simply i just don't care about anyone there's no stakes nothing is really happening so yeah i don't know what book i'm gonna read next though but i know it's probably gonna lean into dark academia so we have either hellbent or Babel. i don't really know because i have never read anything by rf kwong and i've heard that Babel is good but i really do kind of miss darlington and i'm already really familiar with this world World, and so maybe this one i don't know i'll probably update you guys later like what book i choose but these are some really good choices i think dark academia is just a good choice for this coming fall season i really realized like my moods towards
towards books because of the seasons like summer is very much like young adult fantasy young adult fantasy you know I think those books like they have to be read outside in order to like capture the aura I think like I have the most energy for them and so those are those are summer books for me and then fall books are definitely like dark academia type of stuff romance belongs to spring and winter because those are the seasons where I just don't want to do anything but lay in my bed and you need a good romance book for that so that's fantastic anyway I'm gonna go do some homework and then I'll update you guys later the plan for today is to get a lot of my housekeeping stuff done I got my to-do list here and it's basically just cleaning up my room because I leave tomorrow morning for my road trip which I'm super excited about yeah and I'm gonna try to knock some things off of this list I have to do my laundry I have to pack I want to sweep and mop my room and like clean up a little bit it's very cluttered it's like an organized cluttered but it's not that organized anymore yeah and then I want to do my nails I want to paint them this green it's called Chahil out Cahill out I don't know you can't read it because it's not focusing but it's a green color and I have painted my nails this before but I want to paint it again just because or you know what I don't think I'm gonna paint it this because with the outfits that I have planned I don't think this is gonna match I might do something neutral this mauvey is it mauve purpley brownish kind of thing I like this one but I don't know I'd have to see. I think I might go with the more neutral one because after I come back from my road trip, I just want to cut my nails because they're getting pretty long and then I'll remove the nail polish. So yeah, that's the plan for today. Yesterday, I did kind of start Hellbent. I'm going to read Hellbent because I miss Darlington and I miss Alex. So I'm going to read that. And I read like the first chapter, first chapter prologue, the November one. Intrigued already? Please, please. I already know I'm going to love the structure of it with it starting kind of like on a banger and then we go back to see like how we got to that scene i'm here for it i love it so that's it for now I'm at a hotel and I didn't bring anything to read because I just know with how busy this weekend is going to be, I will not have time for it. But I read the first two chapters, the prologue and then for chapter one, and then a little bit of chapter two of Hellbent. I'm finding it easier to read without an audiobook this time around, I think because I have a better understanding of the world that this book is set in. And so that's really good. I'm super happy about that because I mean, while I do like audiobooks, I tend to zone out and not really hear what I'm listening to. But yeah, I'm really liking Hellbent, like what I've read so far. I'm super excited for it. I missed Alex. I miss Darlington. They are everything to me and I'm super excited. I don't know if I'll vlog much over the weekend because I am pretty busy, but if I do, you'll see a little bit of it. Oh, and then I also chose to paint my nails green. It doesn't show really well in this light like that. I felt like the mauve color wasn't the thing to go with. And so I went with green, which is a little bit more colorful. That's it for now. Plus plenty of screens means you won't miss a second of the action. I kind of forgot that I was still filming this because it's been a while, but we're going to end it here with a tiny review on Hellbent by Lee Wardugo, the second book in the Alex Stern series. This book was so good. It was so good. Sequels are just my thing, actually, because in the same vein as Jade City... <laughs> ninth house was so hard to get through and i didn't really comprehend a lot of things i just knew that we were in new haven we were at yale alex was a survivor of a multi-homicide i think that's what it's called she's in the secret society called lethe darlington is super sexy and hot alex is amazing murders were happening magic seeing ghosts that's pretty much all i remembered and so going into this i definitely needed to go read recaps and it helped and 
and Hellbent was just so good. I kind of flew through this, even though it took me like a month. There were just days where I was so tired and I just could not conjure up the energy to read anything, to do anything really. But finally, this week, I really committed to finishing this book and it's so good. Oh my God. I just, okay, like I'm trying to be coherent here. And so let's talk about the first part, which is like 300 pages. That all basically takes place in October. 300 pages for one month that is like bonkers because so many things happened so many things happened oh my goodness the opening for it i think i already said so good amazing oh my god and just like i just love the dark academia vibes and like the college campus setting it's so good i read the rest of this book on my college campus and so you can kind of guess like the atmosphere that was just like going on reading ninth house i didn't really get like a strong sense of Pamela Dawes but in this book she is like one of the main characters and I love her so much she is everything to me oh my god the fact that (laughs) it makes so much sense but like reading it it's kind of like what Dawes Pamela Dawes is a witch and Alex comes to this conclusion because Dawes is such a good cook I mean like she comes to the conclusion because they're making like a potion for talismans but like Alex is like oh my god she's a witch no wonder she's so good at cooking that's amazing I love it and I love that this book although it has like very dark tones I just love how funny it is it's so good the banter is amazing Lee Bardugo does like group banter so so well and we see this within like I've only read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom but like that series is just like such great group banters and like to see that in this is so good it is so amazing I love it so so much and like all the different characters I love them like the central group characters we have alex we have dawes we have darlington we have turner we have trip we have mercy they are all just like so great and you would never think that they would work together but they do and it's so good talking about each of those characters still talking about dawes yeah she was amazing she was great and i love that like although i don't really remember much about ninth house i remember she was more of a shy character and she didn't really interact with anyone but then with this she's really in it with alex and she's like has such a bigger presence and i really really love her and like those little snippets where we get her perspective they were fantastic i love her so much talking about trip he's not a really big character in here but (laughs) it's just so funny the fact that like they recruit him and he's like i just needed the money and i thought it would be cool like same you know sometimes people go into like these sacrificial rituals just for the fun of it trip is just such a funny character he's your typical frat boy stoner guy who most people would write off but like for him to have like so much like complexity in here like emotional complexity and the little snippet that we get of his past it has made me care so much more about this character who i didn't really care for and i was kind of like i don't really see the purpose of like you guys recruiting him but i think it's just like great and then abel turner detective abel turner centurion he is everything to me he's very sexy and very hot i love him but he's a very different sexy and hot from darlington darlington is golden boy dark academia tortured soul hot and sexy turner is responsible (laughs) and morally correct sexy and hot he is amazing and i didn't really have a lot of strong feelings about him in ninth house but in this one i think it was just like right from the get-go i was really loving him i think he's just such like a great character and i just love him i love him so much oh my god and the fact that he's in his 30s i didn't know that i didn't know that i thought he was like the same age as probably like dawes and darlington like mid-20s to late 20s you know but he's in his 30s there's nothing wrong with that it just like threw me in for a loop so yeah I love Turner. He's amazing. He's amazing. He really is amazing. I love him so much. Mercy. I really did not expect her to have like such a big role in here because I think like in the first book, she's very much like a side character. I mean, like Lauren, we don't really see her, but like she is there. And so I thought like Mercy would also have that same role. But then for Alex and Mercy to have this like really intense friendship, I love it so much. And Mercy, sweetest girl ever. I love her so much. And the fact that she is just so game to protect Alex and like 
do things for Alex because it's because Alex saved Mercy and Mercy is now wanting to save Alex. It's just so, so good. I love it. Talking about Darlington, I love the fact that when he comes back, when Alex gets him back from hell, he gets a perspective. That is so amazing. I love it so, so much. Oh my God, because he had perspectives in the first book. And so for it to continue on when he comes back, amazing. That is so amazing. Oh my God. I love him so much. Just, I... I missed him. He was amazing. And then talking about Alex, Alex, she is just like such a great protagonist. I love her so much because she, I feel like would be your typical like show no emotion, very badass character who like has no fear and all that stuff. And I feel like the way she's written in here, she like has so much emotion and she doesn't want to be this tough person who has to go through such hard things. Like she just wants the idyllic life of being a normal 20 year old and I think that's just like so amazing about her character and I love her so much and it's just the fact that she gets into like so much shit and it's like most of it's not even her the fact that she gets into so much shit it's like so heartbreaking and I'm just like Alex I'm really hoping that like people stop bothering you and you can live the life that you want but talking about the plot I have some notes that I wrote the fact that like ugh, Darlington is referred to as gentleman demon so sexy oh my god I love it so much like yeah yeah. Golden Boy of Lethe, Gentleman of Lethe, Gentleman Demon. So amazing. Great. Fantastic. I love it. I do like how there's some real life rooted into this because them going into hell for the first time, cinematic. Actually, so, oh my god. It's It truly was just like such a high point in this book and it's so good because you don't know what to expect. Everyone has these like ideas and depictions on what hell is like, but like the way Leo Bardugo writes it, it's like so raw and intense. I feel like it's not sugar-coated, but I also feel like it's not like so played up where this is literally the devil's lair it's kind of just like dull and gray with like so many unfortunate things that like are bound to happen i think it's so good and like oh my god like this scene like the fact that like we get a little bit of insight into these four characters alex dawes turner and trip like jaw dropped i was reading it and i was like what the hell is going on and then when i realized it oh my goodness it just makes you feel so connected to these characters and i think it was just such a good like device to make us really invested in these characters because it's a part of their personal lives their worst moments in their lives and the fact that like all four of them are experiencing all four of like those moments you cannot walk away from that actually like the deep connections that they now have like you know this person in such a completely different way now you cannot go back to looking at them the way you did before it's so intense and it means so much to me i can't also let's talk about the fact that vampires are real in here vampires like when that came up literally i had to stop reading for a little bit because vampires vampires but it makes sense they are a form of a demon the fact that they feed off of like all these hyper intense emotions it makes so much sense vampires and the fact that again spoilers here trip turns into a vampire oh my goodness oh my goodness it's like so unfortunate but like the way he's portrayed at the end it's kind of funny because his soul is still there but like this motherfucker wants to eat you it's so funny but also very sad and like thinking about it with darlington being in hell he was in hell for a year a year even alex talks about this saying like he's been down here just like putting these stones up for a year and she didn't even know what he was going through and i just i, I don't know it's just like it's so heartbreaking and then he comes back and he's not even fully human he's still part demon i just like okay like let's see let's talk about that too the fact that alex and darlington are now connected because of their connection to hell they were truly meant to be please like you can't take them away from me they are everything to me i love them so much oh my god like i need this exploration between darlington and alex to go further because alex has only spent like that year with darlington being his dante and when darlington disappears she only really has this memory of him and so when he comes back like this is a new darlington this is not the one that you knew this is even alex says this she's like this is like or it's either darlington or alex who says this but they make it a point saying like we are not 
mentor and mentee anymore. Levels have shifted. They are not the same people that they were a year ago. And just like seeing that dynamic, because Alex also like says this, she's like, you know, I've spent so much time talking to Darlington in my head that having a conversation with him now here is just so difficult to hold because he's not the same person that I knew. And that is just like a recipe for development. And I fucking cannot wait for it. Oh my God. They're like literally my everything, my actual everything. Yeah, they're both amazing. And like Alex and Darlington, every single scene they had together was just the most intense and intimate thing ever. Because like... (laughs) I don't even know how to explain it because there's just like, I don't know. There's just like this like tether between them that like no one else has with like each other. Like Alex and Darlington, they know each other like in layers. Like they don't really know each other, but like knowing their nature, it's just like it provides such good fucking lines please like oh my god the writing in here fantastic i loved it so so much but yeah that cliffhanger for sure we're gonna pick off right where we left off in the next book and we probably will not get that next book for at least like four years because ninth house came out in 2019 i didn't read it until like 2021 so i didn't have to wait that long but yeah ninth house came out in 2019 and then hellbent came out in 2023 yeah i need this series to speed up because that cliffhanger ending no way i don't know how things are gonna finish i like have no predictions at all this was just such a good sequel it was so good i loved it i love intense characters and i love intense character dynamics and relationships i think they are just the best things ever especially with this book that like centers around magic and like darkness of magic and just like is such an intense like story plot and to have that in it it's just the sacrifices you would make for people you love and care for oh my god the amount of devotion that like alex and darlington have to each other like let's talk about that too because every single time like people were ready to give up on darlington alex was like no we can't like we owe him i owe him and it's just like i said it's so intense and so like i don't even know how to explain it it's just yeah i can't wrap my head around it it's just the most intense thing ever and i love it anyway that's it i gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars not a full 5 star i feel like i have to sit on it still i feel like it blinked out on some parts but overall it was fantastic so 4.5 out of 5 stars i forgot to mention how funny it is that the big main villain the demon himself (laughs) sometimes transforms into a half man half rabbit and sometimes a rabbit in like a really good pristine suit it's very sinister but it's also so hilarious because please the image of that is so funny it's so funny a demon who has the body of a man but the head of a rabbit i can't help but laugh it's so funny that's all i wanted to mention about that that is gonna be it for this video this vlog thank you so much for watching you know not a lot of stuff happened and i do appreciate if you watched all the way to the end so i will see you guys in the next video goodbye